All right. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Um, hello, my name is John O'Cogill. I'm one of the consultants on the Battle Creek Regional Park Master Plan Project. Um, here to just welcome you to our master plan community meeting uh, online today and uh, kick it off. Um, I just a couple of things. Uh, um, ben uh, Karp will be providing a about 15 minute overview of the master plan uh, draft and where we are today with the concepts. Um, and then we wanna provide an opportunity for folks to uh, ask their questions. Um, and we have um, uh, Ben and others from, from the uh, county um, to uh, help answer those questions. Um, we'll ask you hold your questions until he's done with the presentation. Um, and then you can use the raise hand feature, which is uh, should be along the bottom of your um, Zoom screen. Uh, and uh, I will call on you and unmute you and you can ask your question. Um, you can also use the um, Q&A feature to ask a question um, and type that in. And we will attempt to get as, to as many questions as possible in the one hour time frame here today. Um, but there will be additional opportunities if your question isn't answered. Uh, ben will be talking about how uh, we'll have some office hours uh, for folks uh, who would like to check in with him and get some additional questions uh, answered. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Ben to kick us off and uh, talk us through uh, the concepts for the master plan. All right, thank you, Jono. Uh, yeah, like you said, my name is Ben Carp. I'm here with Ramsey County Parks and Recreation. We're gonna be going through the Battle Creek Regional Park Master Plan today. So just a quick agenda. Um, like Jono said, I will be doing a short presentation going over the plans in progress, uh, the master plan project for Battle Creek Regional Park itself. Uh, we'll take a look at the master plan concepts, talk about the natural resources, and then look at some of the engagement next steps and where the project is heading. Uh, so there are actually two plans going on right now. One is the one we are here about today, and that's the Battle Creek Regional Park Master Plan Amendment. And that's addressing the entire park for both natural resources and recreation improvements, uh, boundary expansion, long-term acquisitions, and we're anticipating a completion of spring 2021. Uh, there's another plan going on simultaneously and that is the Battle Creek Regional Park Pig's Eye Master Plan Amendment. Um, and that's addressing the natural resources, public safety, island building component of the Pig's Eye section of the park specifically. Um, and that's anticipated to be completed in the fall of 2020. So just an overview of the plan itself. We began planning activities in 2019. Uh, the old master plan was outdated. Uh, but we we're still working off the plan from 1981. Um, so we're looking to develop a long range vision and recommendation from the park uh, that's been built through public engagement and community engagement. So some of the goals of community engagement that we wanted, uh, we wanted to work directly with the public throughout the process. Uh, we wanted to use an equity lens to amplify voices that may not always be heard, um, connect with a broad cross section of community stakeholders and deploy a defined communications and messaging strategy throughout the project. Um, so here's the original timeline. We're a little bit off. Uh, we were anticipating having our last design shreds and things further back in the spring. Um, and those have been pushed out due to the global pandemic, but I think we are still on track for, you know, adoption of the master plan by the Met Council early in 2021. So we had a variety of engagement and outreach techniques. One of those was pop-up meetings where we would go to an event already occurring, ask people what uh, they thought about the park, what they'd like to see, that those kinds of questions. Um, we also held community meetings. We had a recreation stakeholder meeting. Uh, we went to some community councils, uh, some different school events, and got input from them on uh, both shred exercises and kind of those initial exploratory exercises. Uh, we also held some at-large meetings. Uh, we had our first at-large exploratory meeting uh, Saturday, August 3rd. Uh, we had the community design charrette, and now we have the meeting today. So online, we also had engagement. During phase one, we had a survey and a wiki map. Phase two, we had another online survey. Currently, we're in phase three. We have a story map and survey up online uh, right now that you can still go and comment and question on. Um, so kind of what we heard throughout public engage engagement was a broad support for a nature center, uh, a lot of support for beginning outdoor programs, 
Snowmaking was a big concern among some people. Uh, In-person events prioritized uh, the water park, playground, other built uses, archery, those kind of types of things. And online, we heard more of a prioritization of passive and natural spaces. So the skiing, hiking, off-road cycling, walking, those kinds of things. Uh, overall, there was also a broad support for the preservation of natural spaces uh, and keep development as minimal as possible and try to cluster that near already developed areas. Um, and of course, a lot of support for connection with and access into Pig's Eye Lake as well as the overall park. So connections north-south over Highway 61, um, and then a lot of support for expanding and acquiring new land to bring into the regional park system. So um, we'll take a look at some concept maps now. Uh, so here's the overall park plan. Um, we want to improve park connectivity and access, uh, explore a new trail loop, uh, bluff line access down to Fish Creek, um, with, including overlooks, rest stops, uh, overpass or overpasses of Highway 61, specifically um, Lower Afton Road was a popular location for access into Pig's Eye. Uh, and then incorporating new areas into the park, uh, Suburban Pond, Fish Creek, and the Mississippi River Bluffs, and then enhance access from the Highwoods Hills neighborhood, which has traditionally been hard to access the park from that side of Lower Afton Road. So looking at park acquisitions, um, as I stated, Suburban Pond open space to the north of the park, uh, Mississippi River Bluffs open space, which stretches between Battle Creek, the main north segment, and um, Fish Creek, which is at the far lower end of the paper, and then also incorporating Fish Creek open space. And 527 Battle Creek Road is an inholding uh, on Battle Creek Road that's been on um, the radar for a long time now as a park inholding for acquisition. Um, so now looking at the main area of the park, there's a lot going on. So we've got breakout maps. Uh, boulder dashed lines are proposed trails, existing are a thin solid line. Uh, red is proposed amen amenities, blue is existing amenities. The um, yellow boxes uh, improve uh, are to signify improved access, crossings, um, those types of things. So let's take a look at some of the breakouts. So, so looking at Battle Creek access, uh, we really want to improve access in the park at major and minor intersections. Uh, emphasize crossings that have historically had difficulty, like I said, across Lower Afton Road being a good example of that. Um, exploring enhancements to trail crossing, crossings along Battle Creek Road. Um, uh, that's where we've got mountain biking and skiing and hikers crossing the road and there's no real good wayfinding or signage there. Um, and then another major improvement that's actually going to be occurring is uh, Public Works is going to be converting McKnight Road from a four to a three lane. And there will be pedestrian refuges at select crossings. I believe they have four of them uh, lined up there. So we're also looking at trail underpasses of Lower Afton and Ruth Street, enhancing the overall park connectivity, seeing if that's a possibility. Um, typical enhanced crossings may include creative crossing paint schemes, rapid flashing beacons, additional signage, crossing signals, and there are many others. And it could be a combination of things as well. So looking at the trails, um, new accessible trail through OLDA per the master plan was up there. Um, Cross-country ski trails in the winter rec area should be given precedence over tra other trail development. There was a lot of uh, support for those and that's been on the county's radar for a long time and that winter rec area would include snow making and lighting. Um, and then another trail to be determined in the future is the Point Douglas Road Regional Trail Connection and that's a uh, St. Paul is working on that master plan currently. So making connections to the City of St. Paul Trail, widening the sidewalk to 10 feet from North Park Drive to Suburban Avenue. Um, a lot of support for making cross-country ski trails inclusive to hikers and snowshoeing shoeing in the winter. Some felt locked out if they didn't have cross-country skis, so allowing for expansion of a side path along those groomed trails, uh, not uh, taking away any groomed trails, of course. Um, and then we're going to continue to work with St. Paul Parks and Rec on the Park Point Douglas Regional Trail um, to link the Battle Creek Regional Park to the greater park system. Uh, and there's a lot of support, of course, for the off-road cycling system. So we want to ensure proper wayfinding and use signage is installed. Um, those trails are multi-use and people need to yield to the correct um, recreational elements. So another thing that came out of community engagement were these nature learning trails. 
Uh, and there was support for both classroom and self-guided use. Um, there's additional signage along these to aid in education. Those could highlight natural features, park history, areas history. Um, that is yet to be determined. And then Battle Creek Elementary already brings classes to the creek, so there's a small one accommodating their use. Uh, these would also add small gathering spaces in the form of outdoor classrooms, which are just little nodes to stop by the way of the trail. Uh, so let's look at some of the amenities. Uh, there's wide support for added restrooms, wayfinding signage, picnicking and sheltering opportunities, additional parking, and waterworks was a very popular amenity. Um, whether that's remodeled or renovated into something else uh, is to be determined yet. Um, added fishing opportunities, there was a lot of support for, for fishing within the park. So we have had limited contact with the DNR about the fin program. Uh, so that would also um, include stocking of fish and then installing some type of pier or other structure along the water's edge so people could fish. Um, and then the Outdoor Recreation and Nature Center uh, would enhance trail access, recreational sports staging area, include wayfinding signage, uh, and a lot of support was there to combine it with the existing rec center through expansion or renovation, um, but a lot of that is to be determined yet. And then the pig's eye section of the park, um, so we're looking at developing at either one or more access points into the park. Uh, the north end of the lake from St. Paul, uh, Red Rock Road is another opportunity, and then of course the crossings over Highway 61. Uh, we would also be looking at a boardwalk or trail system with wayfinding signage overlooks and wayfinding and nature interpretation signage, looking at small watercraft launches, parking, restrooms, and again, the natural resources island building public protection and other natural resource activities are being addressed in a separate plan from this one. So looking at Fish Creek, uh, the concept plan calls for adding a couple of additional trailheads with some more parking, enhanced, which would enhance trail access and include wayfinding signage, uh, looking at some picnic or shelter development in the area, uh, a playground development. Uh, this would also include acquisition of City of Maplewood property and the new natural surface trails in the area. So natural resources preservation, the natural resources section of the Battle Creek Master Plan is gonna further detail natural resource goals, uh, the resource related background history, the current resource quality and management issues, ecologically based management pr principles, and the description of native habitats found within Battle Creek Regional Park. Uh, detailed information for specific management areas compatible with the overall resource goals and information are, is going to include land cover descriptions, county and state status of protections, habitats, and species, the management issues facing the park, term management goals, uh, a resource survey and inventory, uh, management tasks, costs and schedule of implementation of that management, and then looking at which areas to convert to native habitat, which was another thing that came out of the public engagement was to you know, keep the park as natural as possible. So other relevant plans that we've looked at um, as a part of this, the Great River Passage Plan, and as you know, that looks at the entire Mississippi River from, you know, downtown St. Paul and further all the way to Battle Creek and includes a lot of things as well and is a real proponent of gaining access into Pig's Eye and there's a lot of good stuff in that plan. Um, the Off-Road Cycling Master Plan, the Off-Leash Dog Area Master Plan, uh, and the Point Douglas Road Regional Trail Master Plan, which is currently in progress. So next steps to engagement, um, we're looking to have a concept master plan review. Uh, we're looking sometime late August, early September, and there's a 30 day requirement for that. Uh, and then we'll be writing the master plan. So there'll be a draft master plan public review. Again, we're looking at later in 2020 for that. We'll be seeking municipal support from Maplewood and St. Paul. Um, other relevant support review, uh, Ramsey County Parks Commission, the Southeast Community Organization, uh, and then we'd be going on to the Ramsey County Board and from there to the Metropolitan Council. So at this time, we're going to open it up for questions. I do just want to point out that I will be holding office hours on Tuesday, July 28th from noon to 4.30. Um, so if your question isn't answered, um, we're encouraging you to call in. Um, leave a message. If I'm busy, I will certainly get back to you, but my afternoon that day is dedicated just to taking calls for this project. So 
I will turn it over to Jono, who's going to moderate the questions for us. Thanks, uh, Ben. Um, thanks for, it's a lot of information and it, uh, we got through it here. Um, so now we have some time um, for, for some questions. Um, and Ben, the, the first question that we got was really just getting, maybe spending a, a short time on um, some detail just on the first map of the, the entire concept map of the park, just showing kind of what the spots are. There are some questions about um, on that first concept map, like what are we looking at? What are the different component areas so people can kind of get oriented? So I don't know if you could pull up that, that first map that you showed. You want the overall map? Yeah, and uh, um, just um, provide a, a quick um, overview of some of the, the main points. Yes. Uh, and locations. So they're specifically, are they specifically looking for, um, what points are they looking for on that overall the map? Is just to point out some of the, the main points of, of the map. So what okay, are we, yeah. so, like, which areas are we in? Yeah. So can everyone see my, uh, do I have the right image up right now? Yeah, and if you could maybe zoom in a bit. Yep, I can. Yeah. This is, there we go. Yeah, there we go. So uh, Highway 61 is running along this blue line, which also represents the Point Douglas Trail Regional Search Corridor. Uh, Lower Afton Road is this other blue line, which is another regional trail search corridor. Uh, Battle Creek Park, the main section that most people are familiar with is where I'm circling my cursor. McKnight Road is here. Upper Afton Road, uh, this is Suburban Pond here. 94 is directly to the north. Uh, this is the community center, um, Battle Creek Recreational Center. Um, this is kind of the winter rec area of the park. Uh, this is west of Battle Creek Road where there are gap grass trails existing currently. Um, here's 527 Battle Creek Road. Uh, this is kind of the Battle Creek corridor arm that follows the creek and connects along McKnight Road. Uh, this is the large parking lot with the pavilion and the shelter, restrooms, waterworks, the playground, uh, the stormwater infrastructure. The off-leash dog area is in this area of the park south of uh, Lower Afton and east of McKnight. Uh, and then there's grass trails and paved trails through this area, which uh, is a lot of wetlands, restored prairies, things of that nature. Um, heading south and then west of Highway 61 is the Pig's Eye Lake area, um, and that's where we're looking to develop access, um, more parking, small watercraft launches, the boardwalk and trail system. And if you keep heading south, uh, well, actually, these red lines signify, signify proposed trail development, looking to create that loop and connect the park as a whole within the area. Um, and this is Fish Creek down here. Uh, the dark area is land already owned by the county. Uh, currently, there are paved trails in this section, which is owned by Maplewood. Uh, and then there are some grass trails that lead down to the creek. Um, I hope that helps orient everyone. Yeah. I think that's helpful. Thank you. Um, we, we have a few more questions here. I'm going to call on some of the folks who have their hands raised. So I'll call on uh, Liz uh, Deering. Uh, Liz, if you'd like to uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. All right, uh, well, thank you. This is really, I think this plan is really exciting um, as a resident uh, right in the middle of Battle Creek who uses it extremely regularly. This is really exciting to see all of the additional assets that will be brought into the park. Um, one question that I do have is you mentioned all of the, at the end there, all of the other relevant plans that you looked at in considering um, how to move forward with this master plan. And I'm sort of curious why the plan that was put together of how the Ponds of Battle Creek golf course should expand. Um, that was the original plan that was done. I don't have the name of it. Um, why that wasn't considered to be part of something that you reviewed for this process. 
Um, it is my understanding that the county board has other plans for the uh, ponds at Battle Creek. Um, I don't have much information beyond that. If anyone, if you'd like to submit a request that I can get a more detailed answer for you, I'd be happy to do that. Okay, how do I submit a request? Um, you can, I don't have, you know, why don't you call my office hours and leave me okay. a contact and I'll get you an email. Does that work? That works perfectly. Thank or you. you can even call in today and just ask for Ben Carp and they'll get you to my line. Thanks, Ben. Yep. Um, thank you, Liz. Uh, we have a few more questions here. Uh, Council member uh, Prince has asked a question here. Um, her question is, I'm involved in the cultural landscape survey of Mounts Park. Has Ramsey County reached out to the Minnesota Indian Affairs Council to ensure that our Dakota community as the original inhabitants of this area are part of this planning process? Uh, yes, we have reached out with them um, and we are working with um, Sam Wegner of the Lower Creek Phelan Project in working uh, to continue to try to get more input from that group. Um, get through all of these here. We have a good number of questions. Um, another question from Gustavo is, here is, um, is the whole Battle Creek Regional Park System going to have a bike trail to go through all like a big loop? So let's go to that trails page and look at uh, the proposed, oh, I hit the wrong button. the proposed trail system. So here's the trails map. Um, and so any of this orange thin line is existing off-road cycling trails. He, he's talking off-road cycling or just bicycling? Um, I think the, the term was bicycle trails here. Okay, so bicycle trails, um, all of our paved trails are multi-use. Um, and so currently you can bike up Battle Creek all the way up to McKnight, um, any of these red lines, um, there's a trail throughout this whole section. You can access this entire area of the park. Um, and there's currently an on-road trail that connects these two. Um, and currently there is a crossing here to get downtown St. Paul. Um, and this is that search corridor for the Point Douglas Regional Trail, um, which may change the configuration of the bike lane here into an off-road section of trail. Um, but so yes, um, you can access all areas of the park on a bicycle. Great. Um, another uh, comment here um, from John um, uh, John uh, Zakelj, I believe. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, the city of Maplewood will be looking for partners to provide environmental education through the Maplewood Nature Center. Are you willing to consider such a partnership? I would certainly think that any partnerships in those, you know, education courses would be more than welcome. Um, I would encourage um, John also to send in um, uh, an email and I can forward it on to Chris Lankowski and Ken in our office, they do all of the park programming. Um, so they, and I know Ken already runs some programs out of Battle Creek. So yes, I'm positive that partnerships would be a really good thing. Yeah, and, and I would just add, I, I believe in our PMT meetings, we've had some initial discussions about, about those kinds of partnerships as well. Um, so mm -hmm. it's something we've discussed. Um, I have a hand raised here, uh, a couple couple hands raised. Uh, Sage uh, Posse, Sage, if you'd like to 
um, unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. Paige, are you there? Looks like you should be able to. Well, we will uh, give Sage a moment here and I'll move on to uh, Tom Diamond. Tom, if you, I'll unmute you and if you'd like to ask your question, um, go ahead. Yes. Uh... As far as the uh, plan, I would uh, hope you would uh, give some consideration. I'd like to know uh, a little bit about how you are going to make these decisions. But on one, uh, whether it be uh, uh, park preserve uh, might be a more uh, appropriate category uh, considering uh, the lands and the uses of these uh, park lands, but also on the as far as the various parcels that uh, should be considered for possible inclusion. And I think there's a fairly long list of uh, parcels, whether it be the, the tree farm uh, north of the uh, workhouse or it be the uh, golf course, totem town, uh, inclusion of uh, the bluff lands that the city and county have acquired as open space Highway uh, Nature Preserve, Henry Park, et cetera. Uh, and uh, should the trail and all this be uh, managed as uh, uh, either under the current park programs as part of the regional park or should it be park reserve? And uh, then as far as the connections, it's, I think it's really important that we uh, have uh, interconnection of this uh, of these two various different parcels, and that includes uh, maybe uh, additional acquisitions that allow access to uh, Fish Creek uh, from McKnight, uh, essentially McKnight and Carver, that area, uh, so we can interconnect this better. And I would also like to uh, be have better information as to how consideration of these connections are going to be done so people can have more input as this moves forward. For example, the connections, the three connections across uh, 61 to access uh, the riverfront are part of the Great River Plan and uh, we don't have time to get into the specifics on it, but I'd really like to know how that's going to move forward and whether the, those suggestions of inclusion will be put on maps and the, the, uh, forwarded going down or they're just going to get excluded somehow or another without the uh, public input. The same thing with uh, the, the nat natural part of the plan for pig's eye. I'm not sure why that's being segregated from the rest of the plan, but there have been no meetings on that, no public hearings. So if it's not part of this plan, how is the public to participate? That's just kind of overall, and I would love to have an input as to how the public is going to be part of that process. Um, so I'll take the first part of that, that I know how to answer. Um, as far as the kind of acquisitions you were talking about, Tom, a lot of the bluff land that you were speaking of, Henry Park, et cetera, is included in kind of the acquisition and connections plan. Um, and then connections across 61 are all going to be spoken to as a part of the draft. So those are not um, going away in our plan as with the Great River Passage stuff. Um, and then I don't know if Scott Yonke should be on and maybe if he wants to take just a minute or two here to explain kind of the process for the Pig's Eye Lake Natural Resources plan to answer that second uh, kind of question that Tom had that that would be helpful, I think. Hi, everyone. This is Scott Yonke with Ramsey County Parks. Uh, can every, I hope everyone can hear me okay. And uh, uh, Tom, it's good to hear from you again. Um, 
I'd like to try answer your question, or at least provide some more insight around the Pig's Eye Lake portion. So uh, Ramsey County is working on two concurrent master plan projects. And really this is revolving around the, the timing of when the overall Battle Creek master plan project it, uh, is planned to be completed, as well as when there are components within the, the Pig's Eye Lake area that are actually needing to be uh, looked at and, and started at a uh, uh, sooner than what the overall master plan um, would, would allow for implementation of, of certain things. So um, I have been working on a, uh, working on preparing a draft plan for the Pig's Eye Lake area. Um, it is not quite yet finished, but uh, there will be, um, in August, there will be um, a public comment period. So I will be putting the plan up for approximately 30 days to allow public feedback. So that, that is gonna be coming in August and that's really gonna address uh, three components for Pig's Eye Lake. So one, it's, it's going to address the, the, the island building project, and it's gonna address uh, other natural resource improvements uh, within Pig's Eye Lake. And it's also going to touch on a high level for public safety uh, for Pig's Eye Lake. So that master plan is a very focused master plan, and it is, uh, it is natural resource specific. So that is why, you know, that's another reason why it was, it was split out because there are not, there's not gonna be any recreation components included within that master plan because it is natural resource specific. Now, at the end of the day, the Pig's Eye Master Plan will be uh, completed prior to the Battle Creek overall one but will ultimately get uh, absorbed into the overall uh, Battle Creek Master Plan Amendment. That is, uh, that's the plan that is including most of the recreation components of that. So I hope that provides a little further clarification in regards to the pig's eye area. Thank you, um, Scott, um, on that. And, and one thing I would also just note around engagement, there is again a, a 30 day public comment period uh, for the plan uh, in addition to this conversation and the, um, the office hours that Ben mentioned as well as the uh, online story map, the link with, of which I provided in uh, the chat uh, as well in the Q, as in the Q&A. Um, there are opportunities in multiple places for the public to engage um, in a variety of formats uh, due to COVID, you know, we're providing as many uh, online and call-in formats as possible so folks can get those questions uh, and comments in. Um, I'll go back to Sage. If, Sage, if we're able to, uh, if you're able to unmute yourself now and we can hear you, you want to try that again? Hmm. Not not looking like we can we can hear you here. Uh, if you'd like to ask your question in the chat, uh, we can uh, we can do it that way. Um, let's see here. Uh, a few more questions, and and for these the questions that I don't get to again, uh, we'll we'll uh, work to to get answers to all of these. Um, so another question here from uh, Carol uh, Gerns is, uh, I've not heard anything about the off-road cycling master plan. Um, I've seen, uh, as the Ramsey County CWMA coordinator, I've seen two uh, species of early detection invasive plants, found only at Battle Creek, spread throughout the park and other, to other parks in the county along off-road bike trails. How is that being addressed? So um, 
uh, invasive species eradication and restoration is all handled um, by our natural resource manager. Um, and he has many projects going on in Battle Creek. Um, he, I, I know he's found Japanese knotweed, uh, garlic mustard. There's many that he's working on in that area alongside his restoration areas. Um, to slow the spread of invasive species on all of our trails, really uh, one thing that the off-road bicycling master plan started, and this one will, you know, take even further, um, is the uh, addition of more uh, educational signage at all uh, trail entrances and trail heads uh, about native, or not native, but about invasive species. Um, we're looking at installing boot brushes and you know, bicycle brushes to try to knock any seeds off um, before and after people get on trails. Um, and I know Mark is a very willing and active partner in trying to um, eradicate invasive species when they're found alongside trails. Great. Um, another question from Council Member Prince. Uh, will there be a public process on the Corps' pig's eye plan to create Oh, sorry, I lost it here. Uh, to create, my apologies, I lost where I was here as people added additional questions. Uh, will there be a public process on the Corps' pig's eye plan to create islands from the dredge spoils? There has been none to date. It is my understanding that such a pu public process would be required by the Met Council. Um, I know that they had some type of online review, uh, and that was a, a long time ago. Um, uh, Scott maybe can answer better if there is going to be further engagement from the Corps. Hi, everyone. This is Scott Yonke again. So uh, to try and answer that question, uh, there will be a public process for the the island building project. So that project is included within the Focus Pig's Eye Master Plan Amendment. So that one will be released to the public in August for public feedback and comments. So uh, there will be a, a public comment period uh, revolving around uh, that project as well as the other components uh, identified within that master plan. And that is meant to follow the requirement that the Met Council uh, has for producing a master plan for the island building project. So notifications around that master plan and when it will be available will be sent out uh, to the public. So you're aware of it and the location of the plan so you can provide uh, insight or feedback to the county regarding that. Great. Well, so we have another uh, individual whose hand is raised to speak. Uh, John Richter, if you'd like to unmute yourself and uh, ask your question, go ahead. All right, thanks, John. Um, I just had a couple things I just wanted to rattle by and that is is there something from the county commissioners or set out for Ramsey County, like what the whole objective was? It seems like the primary objective when I'm reading this is just to get input from the community. Um, I don't know if there was an overlying objective as far as what you wanted to accomplish with this master plan. So that was one comment. I'll just leave that out there. But um, from a, when, when we're looking at this, it seems to me like Ramsey County does quite well with the park infrastructure, looking at things, trailheads, signs, road crossings, and things like that. And we've got natural resources and we have recreation areas. We've got those two specific areas. But speaking about the recreation areas, we have multiple disciplines that are intended to be used within the park, whether it's skiing, uh, mountain biking, walking, bird watching, um, pole hiking, um, a number of different things within the park. And I'm wondering if there is another overlay that specifically talks about the use or the individuals that would use the, the park. Is there an engagement, equity, 
or introduction of the resource, which is Ramsey County Park System for the community so that, and take, it, take a look at it through that lens as far as how do, we, how do we look at getting the community engaged with the park system? How do they use it? Where do they go to to get introduced to the park? And then how do they progress to the point where they become stakeholders and supporters of the park system? I'm, I'm really looking at the, the programming aspect of this. And we know we have lots of different organizations that work within their specific discipline, but I think it'd be good to have some type of review from those constituents groups and just look at it through the lens of their perspective and see that we have uh, a collaboration so we don't have built-in conflict like one single trailhead where all the different things originate from which causes issues because you're like, I wouldn't say competing, but you're kind of overlaying. And I think we have great opportunities because of the size of the park to actually spread that out. So I, I'll leave it at that. I, it's, it's comments, but it's questions about, is there an overlay with this engagement equity and uh, introduction of the, the users? Thank you, John. Uh, ben, did you have anything you wanted to say on that? Um, yeah, I guess the overall, you know, goal of the master plan is to, was to take a look at all the recreation, natural resources, everything that's happening within the park to essentially update the old plan from 1981 so that we've got a more usable document. Um, as it turns out, a lot of the same uses that were happening in 1981 are still very popular and active today. Uh, and, so uh, that was good to hear as far as how, how we get people involved in the park. Um, you know, that's a, that's a good question for programming and there's been a lot of excitement around how, how do we do that programming and we're still piecing that together to release as a part of the draft master plan. Um, uh, as, so I, I guess I hope to have more information on that piece as we go forward. Um, as far as review from these different groups, that's what meetings like today are for and what the review sessions are for. We sent the, you know, notifications to all these different groups, hoping they would come and question and comment. Yeah, I, and the one thing I would, I would also just add is as a, as a component of that equity piece has been this uh, engagement process, um, certainly just the starting point, but many of the questions that we engaged with the community last year during the pop-ups and, and stakeholder meetings were around you know, what are the uses that that you currently are engaged in at the park do you use the park how often do you use the park um you know what would you like to see what would you come out for um and all of that kind of getting to that that first question of how do folks get engaged and become stewards of the park well part of that is do they see themselves reflected in in uh, the activities and uh, uses uh, in the park, which is another kind of component of this master plan is to, to update those, those pieces. Um, and certainly uh, we're continuing to do the, the work of um, getting this plan out, as Ben said, I, to, to a, a wide cross section of community members. And we, we certainly need all the help we can get. So if there are ideas or, or connections that folks have to um, spread uh, this concept more widely. Uh, that is that is always um, uh, appreciated. Um, I have a, a couple of other questions here. Uh, there have been a couple of questions just about process and who we've uh, connected with, um, and um, uh, just. Uh, overall the, the engagement process and what, what meetings we have and haven't had. Um, ben, I don't know if you want to just at a high level or maybe I could at a high level and then you could add on just what, what we've done for engagement. Um, you know, last summer uh, we uh, spent a lot of time uh, with pop-ups, um, which we found to be a very effective tool for getting to communities that wouldn't usually be involved in or having traditionally been involved in uh, planning processes like these. So a great example was going to the Monktown Farmers Market last summer, uh, where we got a lot of great community feedback from 
the the Hmong community and a lot of uh, BIPOC folks. Um, and uh, that was again in that first stage of like, what do you want to see? How do you use the park now? We also uh, held some stakeholder groups uh, and stakeholder meetings, as Ben mentioned, the recreation stakeholder meeting. Um, uh, we, we had a, a design charrette um, and certainly have been um, in the last couple of months holding more targeted uh, meetings as possible, uh, though COVID has um, changed some of our final kind of approach to, to engagement. And then I would just add again that uh, you know, a great opportunity for for comments. Uh, now that we're at a point of having a kind of concepts, is going to be the 30-day public comment period. Um, uh, another question about um, off-road uh, cycling. Um, there's a question: Off-road cycling uh, trails seem to be overrepresented in this plan. Is there a plan to provide bicycles for those who do not have them? Um, it's a question of kind of barrier to entry for that use. Um, yeah, that's another thing that uh, was a popular idea through um, public engagement is getting people who are not mountain bikers themselves into the sport or a chance to try the sport. Um, so we are looking at ways to do that programming and speaking with some of the MORC representatives. They've got vendors who will occasionally like to kind of bring out their showroom in the back of a truck and you know just let people try out bikes and hoping that it becomes a uh, you know a new sale at some point down the road um, so having events like that is one idea we've had um, with the outdoor recreation center there was some thought given to do we have rentals or you know it, not even a rental but something that you can check out like a book you know a stockade of some bikes at some point um so those are all things we're looking at as possibilities and we are looking at making it you know easily accessible for those without uh their own mountain bike a question from uh andy uh i know he says i noticed um there were uh, it was mentioned that there were concerns about snowmaking. Uh, what are those concerns? Could someone also talk about the dedicated separate separate hiking slash snowshoeing plans on winter trails? I don't know if there are any concerns about the snowmaking. Um, that's kind of always been a popular item, both between the sledding hill and the um, cross country ski trails. Uh, there were community members that came out and said, you know. I'd like to hike these in the winter. I'd like to snowshoe. Um, and, you know, I know when you have a groomed trail, you don't want people walking all over it. So one of the thoughts is to, you know, have a separate to the side of the cross country ski trail, but a five foot wide section that people can walk to the side. So they're not trampling the cross country ski. They can still access the park. A lot of people want to park in the rec center and then go hike in the Western portion of the park. Um, Cause there's, not much for parking along Battle Creek Road and even less in the winter. Um, so making, you know, even if it's just one trail to get them over to those hiking areas that they like to go to. That's the idea behind that. Great. There's a, a comment here from Catherine. Um, I'm concerned uh, the mountain bike trails are proposed without adequate impact put, act from, uh, input from the low impact public and other users. Uh, my experience as a walker on a shared use mountain bike trail is lack of consideration by the bikers, increased erosion and litter. Uh, additionally, more trails will disrupt the natural resource base of the park. Um, let's see here. So I, I would just say that um, we've heard similar comments and I've got a work representative and our natural resources manager looking at this entire trail system. Uh, there's already some uh, trails that are currently represented that uh, they both agreed can be removed from the plan. So once we do release the 30 days, some of these will be uh, removed um, in, in talking about hikers on these trails. Uh, we've also heard um, worries about conflicts in the past. Uh, we are working on improving signage to help educate people. In addition, um, we're looking at 
widening uh, select trails so that it's instead of being you know a three foot off-road cycling plant three foot off-road cycling trail uh, they would widen that to a double track so it's more in the neighborhood of five feet so it makes it easier to pass safer to pass uh, safer for more parties on some of those popular hiking routes um, so we're we're looking at everything we can do to make these safe and and good trails for everybody great um there uh, another question um from ann um could we have a history trail? Uh, this should talk about the indigenous and native peoples, uh, former use of Battle Creek. Um, the question of why is the creek named Battle? Um, and an encouragement to incorporate proper acknowledgement to the history of the special land. Uh, yeah, so as part of the nature and educational trails that would that has come up as a proponent or an aspect. So that could certainly be rolled into one of the larger trails or all of them. Um, those details haven't been exactly figured out at this level of a master plan, but that would certainly be something uh, worth putting into those elements. Great. Great. Uh, let us see here. What else? Other questions? Uh, question from Julia. Um, concerns here for the planned new uh, parking lot at Suburban Pond. Um, have you considered the potential risk for bringing increased crime to the neighborhood due to a new parking lot? Um, so we so we always consider crime and vandalism. Um, many of the lots at Battle Creek do have gates that are closed at night. It could be similar to that. I mean, this would be a very limited parking, if anything. Um, this is on the Suburban Pond master plan from quite a while ago to bring some restroom and some facilities to that area of the park. Uh, so yes, it is a consideration when, whenever we implement something to, to you know, reduce any crime or vandalism. Um, oh, we, looks like we have a hand here from uh, Connie uh, Bernardi. Uh, Connie, I'm going to unmute you if you'd like to speak and ask your question. Thank you. Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Yes. I was just wondering, um, Ben, when they asked that question about the name Battle Creek, do you, mm -hmm. do you, I didn't hear what the answer was for how that name Battle Creek came about and, and then, and then maybe I'll have a follow up after I hear that response um the story that i have heard at the risk of being completely wrong here um is that there were two indigenous groups um and there was an actual battle along the creek when one attacked another um, there's been disputes to that saying no they were playing a, a game and pioneers didn't see a battle um so that's my understanding in a very small nutshell. Okay, thanks. Because I was just if it if it if it was um, the name was disrespectful in any way to um, indigenous communities. I just it, it is a good point to evaluate, but it, not the butt part. It would just be good to make sure that we know that because beyond just the interpretive part of it, actually possibility of a name change could be appropriate. And I'm not saying that is at all in this case, because I know nothing about it. I just wanted to um, follow up based on that question that was asked. Yeah, and it's not, it, this isn't the first time that I've heard that question. Um, and, you know, a name change uh, would probably be part of a more of a cultural landscape study, similar to what uh, St. Paul is doing in Mounds Regional Park. Um, so that is certainly, I wouldn't say it's off the table or on the table. I don't know where the leadership of the county stands with a name change, um, but it is certainly something that, you know, we can mention as a part of this plan that is something that needs to be explored further. Thank you. Great. Um, we're, we're coming up on time and I want to be respectful of everybody's time here. Um, uh, Ben, I don't know if there are any final comments or if you'd want to put up the um, comments.
contact around the office hours there. Um, so folks have that if they want to follow up with their additional questions. Um, the comments that have been provided here, uh, we will uh, we will incorporate uh, into our engagement um, and uh, be giving all that to to Ben and the county uh, for consideration. Um, ben, is there anything else uh, or Scott, anything else you wanted to say before we close out here? Yeah, I just would like to thank everyone for showing up today. And like John was said, we'd encourage you call in or go to our website and put comments through those online tools. Um, I believe there is a link on there where you can get to my email. If not, call in and we can get you email if there's anything you want to submit that way. Um, we're, we're happy to accommodate and yeah, we just want to encourage everyone to be as engaged as they wish. Great. Uh, hey, John, this is Scott Yonke here. Um, I do, I just want to say uh, thank you to everybody that has joined. I appreciate your comments uh, that were asked uh, and we will try our best to try answer and provide uh, responses back. Um, I, but again, um, I just wanted to say thanks and, and, and appreciated your, your time today. Thank you everybody. And, um, have a good one. I just mentioned here, I, I did put uh, Ben's uh, email address here uh, in the comment chat. So if, if you uh, want to use that, uh, be an easy way to get in contact with him. Well, that is our program for the day. Thanks again so much for coming out. Thanks.